Yeah, because you know, this event is unbranded, right? So I had to go out and find something that would, okay, okay, yeah, okay, we'll do the hug, yeah, we'll do the hug, we'll do the hug. I had, to, I had to wear something, I had to find a red and black so I could be Keller Williams colors today. Yeah, thank you. So we can, start a, we can start a rumor. <laughs> so anyway, let's go. Well, last time we started a rumor, yeah. we were in our underwear together. Yes, we, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true, that is true. Yeah, yeah, let, let's give you a, you know, this guy's amazing. I, I do these spoof videos at Christmas and uh, I wanted to spoof him. I don't know if anybody follows what uh, Chris does. He does these, what, 4.30 kind of? Early early morning, uh, and you, he talks to your social audience, right? Yeah. Um, so I've been watching them, watching them, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do a spoof video <laughs> on that, right? So I, I actually, I called them up, and I told, and I was so, I, believe it or not, I was very nervous when I called them. And I said, Chris, you know, you know, we've gone for breakfast, we chat this once in a while and whatever, but I said, I gotta ask you a favor. I do these spoof videos, I told them. Without even me finishing the sentence, the guy says, I'm there, I'm, in. I'm there. And I'll tell you something, it was very uncomfortable for me to be in like a muscle shirt and boxers beside <laughs> this guy in a muscle shirt and boxers. Actually, when I saw him take off his shirt, I thought, wow. <laughs> I was very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. When you took off your pants. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. You are one awesome guy. Okay. I just feel like I'm a child in like a... Yeah, I know, I know. Like That's what we did this. We did this to make you feel uncomfortable. Really awkward. Okay, so uh, as of June 2019, you're ranked eighth in Canada for KW and GCI. Congratulations, Thank amazing. You. you just arrived in Stony Creek, what, five years ago? Five years ago on September 17th, I moved back to Canada. Yeah. And when did you get licensed here? Uh, November of that year, so 2014, so it's almost been five years. So would you call yourself an overnight success? No. Agree or disagree? Disagree. Okay, then tell me why. <sighs> All right. Um, well, I was down in Houston for, uh, I, went down, I went down to Houston right before the recession, got into commercial real estate down there, and that was a struggle just to get down there uh, to begin with. I went down there, I sold my car, I had 700 bucks and, uh, that I had to get down there with, $400 ticket, so I had 300 bucks my, to my name, and basically started from scratch down there, where I didn't know anybody. And it was all going well. We decided to start a, uh, a brokerage, and that was going well because uh, before the recession, money was flying around like crazy in the commercial world. And then the recession hit. That's pre-08 you're talking, right? Yes, yeah. and then the recession hit, and it was, um, I tell our team all the time, it was the, the worst and best experience of my life. Because hmm. it was, um, I, I have it written down in a journal, I, wrote, I worked for 214 days straight. Um, and that's not like taking afternoons off, I mean, it's 14 hours at least a day. Um, slept in my office because my lights got turned off in my house, and in Houston it's really hot and humid, so got our electricity turned off, so had to sleep under my desk. There. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't like funny, like, you know, everybody's watched Seinfeld before when George is under his desk. No. It's not that funny. Yeah, it wasn't funny at all. <laughs> um, I had to uh, shower at the, the gym that I was sneaking into, and uh, during that time, I made zero dollars. Oh, wow. That entire time. So, all that stuff that I learned from there and kind of just going Hard through Hard knocks, right? Yeah, and it was, um, at the time, I didn't have a wife or kids, but I was, I mean, I ate tuna and eggs and beans. That was it for like about a year straight. Wow. But that was the best experience of my life. So, you came here, and then you hit the ground running. Like it's, like your name is out there, it's, it's incredible. So what did you do? What was the first thing you decided to do when you got here? Um, talk to people. Okay. I know it's a really strange yeah, it's concept. Yeah, it's very unusual, yeah. 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 Well, what I did was I, I, I did something, not, I wouldn't say illegal, but um, when I came back. Um, <laughs> oh, this is a real honest I uh, threatened people for listings. Um, no, and I, um, what I did was I, I sent a, a letter out to my neighbors. Cause like one thing I, I really loved about Houston, Texas is the Southern hospitality. Everybody knew each other. If somebody was in the area, they'd pop by, they'd knock on your door. We wouldn't even leave our doors locked. People just yeah. walk in. I'd come home for work. People would be in my backyard. Well, it's it's amazing. Cause I, I had experience in a US suburb and they would bring you like, everybody brings you like some baked good when you move in. It's something incredible. And in street. our street there, like we'd let the dogs out front and my dog would go over to the neighbor's house and like knock on the, their door kind of thing, look in. They'd let their dog out and there'd be like this, uh, in the court we have there, there'd be like 10 dogs just running around, like yeah. everyone kind of knew each other. So I just said, you know what, I, moving back to Stony Creek, I don't know anybody here, I'd been gone for like 10 years, and um, I basically just wrote a letter um, and went and just door knocked everybody. Really? Before I had my license, I'm, I'm Chris Knighton, I'm gonna become a realtor, I don't have my license just yet, but I have my cards already done up, so. Oh, well, that was, I don't know if that's legal. Nah, that's what I was gonna say, <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. I don't, is anybody here from the registrar from Rico? Yeah, right? well, they, they love me anyway. So you, like, you, you walk your neighborhood a lot, or you did a... We did, yeah, I think, uh, Dorn, just getting in front of people yeah. was the way that I found that, um, because I had nobody in my database, it was all like my friends and the ones that were doing something, they're usually kind of 
yeah. not in back in Stony Creek. Um, and I, I didn't know very many people. And so what I did was literally just get out there and meet people, put them in my database, and how can I add value to them? And the very first listing I got was the first day I got my license was a friend, from a friend. Talk about being nervous. I haven't talked to this guy in a while. I played junior hockey with him and everything. And I just called him up and said, I know you live around the corner. Um, what are you doing? I'd love to come by for a beer. And went over there and he's like, yeah, we're thinking about selling our house. It's actually perfect timing for you. Um, but I felt really nervous because I was like, I hadn't talked to these people in a long time. So I got over that real quick. Oh, cool. And then just start talking to people and how do I add value to them? Okay, great. So you, you just, uh, I, I saw on Facebook, right? You, you had a milestone of 100 plus listings, 101 listings. 105 you, listings. Right 105 now. right now. So that's cool. You, you really keep an eye on your numbers, right? Yes. So, yes. so tell me something, Chris. You know, there's this thing that... You know, you know, Chris Knighton sells off market, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right? A little bit, right? So, and and you're very cooperative with other agents, but Absolutely. you do sell a lot off market, right? Um, or I would say a lot, but we do some stuff some? exclusive. When I came back yeah. here, no one was doing exclusives. Actually, okay. no one was really using social media, but because like kind of down south, there was a little bit. They were ahead of the yeah. times type of thing. I kind of used that and came back here. People were getting so pissed off. Sorry, they were getting yeah. so upset. Yeah. Um, that like I was getting Rico complaints and uh, um, to our board and everything, which we were doing nothing wrong. Okay. We were doing perfectly legally, and it was an exclusive listing that was allowing us to market our properties, going above and beyond just putting it on MLS. Was yeah. to while they're in the exclusive period and getting everything done, I could get out there and get to other agents and other people. And so how do you sell it to the, the, the sellers? How do you sell that whole concept that not going on the MLS where there's 3,300 3, agents and blah, blah, blah? Oh, so we reach way more people through social media, which we can track, we okay. can communicate to more, and actually we can see our numbers on where they're coming through, and we can actually talk to those people, so we're reaching consumers in a larger area, and when we were doing it, we, we wouldn't just target certain areas because I've sold uh, homes and say there's one in uh, Niagara on the Lake that we sold, it was from a guy in Peterborough because his daughter saw it in Toronto, told him about it that he wouldn't have seen, he would have missed an opportunity for himself. He was represented by somebody up there. I said, yes, absolutely, we fully cooperate with you. And that allows us to just to reach more people. And if you are doing what's best for the clients, it's actually not in our best interest. So we have a decision-making triangle or integrity triangle or team, and it starts off with, it's always client best interest first. Okay. Um, then it does it fit within our culture and our ethics. And then lastly, is it what's best for us? And if you look on the surface of it, um, that exclusive listing, if I sell that off market, we don't get to do the fun stuff. Uh, we love open houses, we love marketing ourselves because that's how we kind of reach the, the greater audience. But if we don't get a chance to do that, we don't get to leverage that listing like we would if it was on the MLS. Yeah, you're right, yeah, you're kind so of So not as good for us but. on the surface, but people say like, why would you do that? And how do you, how do you sell it to the clients? It's what's best for the clients all the time. And if it's not, then we don't do we it. Don't do we it. give them the decision. Okay, cool. Let's talk lead generation. Perfect. What's your number one source of lead gen? Uh, sphere and influence, okay. uh, referrals and open houses. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> uh, no, our team, they're out there somewhere over there. They, they do an incredible job with open okay. houses and the fact that we get to get belly to belly with people, mm. uh, that's the best way I like to do it. And if it's door knocking or if it's just meeting people, just having those conversations, asking the right questions, asking them how we can help those people out. Yeah. That would probably be the number one in terms of uh, ROI, in terms of time and money spent yeah. on it. Somebody mentioned that when you get a list, uh, 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 somebody lives on a street said you get a listing and your whole team comes and knocks on the door at some point, uh, like at Every, the beginning. Every single listing that we get, okay. we not door knock. Like we're not doing it today because it's Thursday, so yeah. tomorrow we'll be out door knock. I'll be out there with the team as well. We don't have a big team. How we many people? Six producing agents. That yeah. makes sense. And give me the, the the job descriptions or titles of everybody else. Uh, we have two listing amazing listing specialists, and we have four buyer specialists. Myself, and then we have uh, my director of operations, Valerie, who's out there. She just recently became uh, the only. Canadian Maps coach in all of Canada. Oh, really? Director wow. of operations, so congratulations. Wow. Very good, congrats, yeah. that's, cool. that's awesome. That's, um, a big, that's big. We have a transaction coordinator, we have a marketing director, and we have a listing manager. And they all work like seamlessly together. I, like, the group of people that we have is absolutely okay. incredible. Cool. Um, you do a lot of things, you do a lot of events. Uh, you know, the, your Canada Day thing, it's epic, right? It's that's epic. Fun, yeah. Is there something that, okay, um, it started small. Like, what's just give us an idea of that budget? Do you mind sharing that? Yeah, for sure. The yeah. first year, I think it was seventeen or eighteen that Val around there, seventeen, eighteen thousand bucks. Um, yeah. At which we bore the brunt of that that yeah. uh, cost. We had a few um, few sponsors. Then the next year, it was probably around the same, um, and we got a few more sponsors. And then this year, we just I, we went a little bit crazy. I think we had thirty five hundred people there, and it was okay. uh, we had a live band. Actually, the sound guy here, he did the sound there. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that was incredible. And it's one of those things to give back to the community, and even people that don't use us or, um, 
in our community. The fact, like, whenever we're talking, we're like, man, I love that because nobody was doing anything for Canada Day, and not a lot of people can get away. Like, yeah. it's expensive to go to a cottage or whatever for Canada Day. So they were like, this is incredible. Our entire family comes. Like, people come from out of town mm. to have a party at their place. They come, cool. do the festivities, watch the band, and then... So would that be one of those sacred cows, no matter how bad the industry got, you would not get rid of? Or is there something else that... No, absolutely. I will continue to do that because I like throwing a big party and okay. it's a lot of fun. That's cool. And it's BYOB, <laughs> so everybody can come. So if I, if I got into your office for like uh, an hour, okay, um, what, would I, what would I be really surprised about in your office? <sighs> what would you be surprised about? Um, oh, God, I don't even know. Okay. Um, Okay, how about this? Okay. What would I steal? What would I steal? What would you steal? Yeah, <laughs> how's that? What would I steal? Okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. All of our support staff. Oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah. that's it. Eh? You're all about the people, right? There's nothing there? Yeah? They're, they're amazing. They're all there here today, and they'll do an incredible job to keep So where are they so we can see? Can you guys put your hands up? There, there, there it is. Awesome. Yeah, Go ahead. yeah great. So I think you guys need some people, right? They're yeah, right there. yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about, uh, like, take three words to describe your brand. Uh, not three, but building okay. trust. Building trust with our clients so that our clients can build better lives. Okay, so how do you how do you articulate how do you articulate that and how do you demonstrate that every day? Well, again, with that uh, integrity triangle that we have, client first, the fit within our culture, and then ourselves last. And it was uh, we did. Everybody read the book. Uh, Start with why. Mm -hmm. Our finding your why. We yeah. did that as a group about two years ago now. And we literally wrote out everything that was important to us. We had a kind of a homework assignment. Everybody wrote down what was important, what they want to see. And it all really came down to as long as we're living in integrity and we're building trust with not only our clients, with uh, other realtors, with the general public, anybody. If we're building trust with those people, we get to help them live better lives. What's something you do for your client, either buyers or sellers, that has a huge impact on them? It's not a lot of money. And forget it, like, I know you're talking about the Canada Day thing, but what's something that you do one on one that really has impact? I would really say just constant communication and actually telling them like um, after all of our listings, whatever deals we do, we'll do about like, well, not Rob's numbers, we do 220 transactions this year. My goal is to talk to every single person when they firm up, when they sell, or when we list. So I, I'll call them all, it's in my schedule. I call them and just say thank you and I say welcome to the family. Thank you so much for trusting in us because it's the largest decision that you pretty much had to make this point in your life. Mm -hmm. And I just appreciate the fact that you get to, we get to work with you and that you when trust When you make us. that call, what time? What time of day? Uh, usually in the morning. Oh yeah? Yeah, cool. I'm usually calling before 12. Okay. So what do you do on a regular basis to motivate your team? We have Monday morning meeting, kind of like Rob was saying. Um, we have, what's anyone heard of 4DX, Four Disciplines of Execution, great book. Um, it's called The Wake Session, a wildly important goal session where we actually track what our goals are for, for the quarter and then we track appointments to get there and we kind of just sit down and kind of motivate each other through that. That's cool, that's cool. Um, what, uh, what's the most common objection at the kitchen table for you guys? It's the same thing as... Is is, the, uh, the commission thing? Yeah, absolutely commission. And um, basically, why are you worth that? And how do you tell them? Go through our process and the value and, and show them we have stats to say like why, compared to the average agent, like through IMS stats and everything, you can actually see what your average is compared to the rest. And if you kind of articulate that and the value that you have, and I love the fact that I watched one of your videos where you said, what's your commission? Zero, yeah. until I do my job correctly for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Totally, yeah. yeah. Great, I'm glad. Thanks, a little shout out there. Thank there you. you. <laughs> um, so uh, what's some practical advice you get for people starting out a, a, a team? Uh, starting a team. Yeah. Um, I would and what say, did you do wrong, you think? Or did you wrong? do anything wrong? Hired wrong people. Okay. Um, my big thing, I, I actually just gave a talk at a charity event uh, the other day, and I talked about how I was very selfish, and I wanted to just uh, want to be a millionaire by the time I was 30. Uh, did a lot of stuff for yourself personally, and then I tried to just, I thought, if that's not going to make me happy, maybe if I just pour into more people. And I actually, my happiness was based on their success. And why I kind of changed that around, instead of saying, I can't base my happiness or my success on just on their people, because if they don't, live up to their potential, that's on them as long as I'm the best version of myself. So I've always, well from then, my, my mission's really been be the best version that I can be so that I can give the most to them. And if I'm doing that every single day that, and I'm giving as much as I can to them, that's really kind of, cool. that answers your question. So what, what realtor, yeah, it does, yeah, in a roundabout way. So who, who do you really admire? Like what, uh, a team or like a local? Or Everybody, uh, I, I find that uh, me and Matt were talking about yesterday. I just actually met him yesterday. It was I think we have very similar mindsets um, around like every person you meet can be somebody that you learn from. And I love talking to people, getting their experiences because like how many people are in here? Let's say a few hundred people. Every single person has 
hundreds and thousands of experience mm -hmm. throughout their life that they can add value to me. So yeah, yeah, you do these breakfasts, right? Like you invite people. Well, I, you, I've been to one of them all the time. I got yeah. to meet uh, Drew yeah. Wolcott for the first time the other day, and I just I, he was gracious enough to invite me over to his place. I'm like, man, I just want to meet you and get to know you a little bit more. Not even so much the business side, but what's important to you and kind of see what you're doing because at the end of the day, it's kind of be, do, have, right? Everybody wants to have something, but until you become that person that's going to be able to do these things, yeah. you're not going to be able to. So I can admire everybody in here that even comes up with these things because we're all kind of in it together. Yeah, and we're investing in our careers. So yeah, awesome. exactly. Okay, rapid fire, okay? Yes. Okay, overrated, underrated, yes. right? Okay, print ads. Uh, overrated. Just listed, just sold. Uh, overrated. Open houses. Underrated. Closing gifts. Underrated. Feature sheets. Uh, underrated. Client appreciation events. Underrated. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't people do them? What do you think it is? Because it takes a lot of time and effort. We start planning what, actually, uh, Megan just booked the permit for the park for next Canada Day yesterday. Yeah, it takes a lot of guts to do it, right? Yeah, and it's a, lot, it's a big investment. Yeah. Client education seminars, do you do that? Uh, uh, we, we have. We haven't okay. done it at a high level. Okay. Underrated. Uh, Christmas cards or something at Christmas. I, Underrated. I uh, love talking to people during times when they're going to be thinking of you, and if you can just be in front of them during a time where they're going to be spending time with family and everything, you get to associate with them. So how do you do that? Do you do something special at like Christmas? We send out uh, Christmas cards to all of our past clients. A week, I try to call every single person that I've done business with. I mean, it's a, a big undertaking. Yeah. However, those special occasions really, I think, you solidify in their minds that you're basically family to them. That's cool. Billboards? Um, overrated. Oh, <laughs> a little controversy. I did, just did, yeah, no, yeah, just yeah. a different. Yeah, you're right. No, no, you're right. You're right. I get it. Newsletters. He's pretty though. Yeah, yeah. newsletters. Newsletters. Yeah. <laughs> newsletters overrated. Overrated. Social media ads. Underrated. Underrated. And I don't know why people aren't doing that more, but anyway, that's another story. Yeah. Pictures of happy clients beside your sign. I think underrated because that for those clients, that is a sense of pride for them, and they get to really enjoy the process, and they get to brag about not only themselves, but they yeah. get to brag about the amazing reel that they have. That's cool. Uh, have you ever thought of doing a video of it, like a cl little clip video? Clip That's do a little thing of the house and you and. That's a great uh, idea. Okay, good. Let's do it. Down. Okay, staging. Uh, underrated or depends. Underrated. Virtual tours, property videos. Um, again, maybe different. I think virtual tours uh, underrated, and the reason, the reason for that, and videos overrated. Um, reason being is because you, in a picture you're capturing a perfect moment in time and you give people that experience, client experience of walking through with their in their underwear in their bed, they yeah. get to actually engage with it. Where property videos, I think the average watch time is like six seconds. And okay. I love some of those, actually Justin showed me one of those uh, cool lifestyle videos. It's engaging, however, if, if, my, if you can't control the experience, it's a little bit tougher for them to engage. Okay, so how about waking up at 4 a.m., standing in front of your computer in your underwear, talking to your social audience? Yes. Overrated or underrated? Uh, uh, underrated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you get a lot of comments on that, right? It's good. Actually, the, um, um, somebody challenged me to do it for 30 days. It was two years ago, um, 30 days in a row. Um, since my kids are a little bit older, I'm waking up at like 5 o'clock now. Like this morning was five, oh, well, 4.30, but um, uh, it was really life-changing for me because you have no idea who's out there. If you put yourself out there, somebody's watching at all times, whether it's your kids, your wife, your, your people you work with, or somebody out there. And I had a person reach out to me. I'd never spoke to them before. I had no idea who they were. And... They said, thank you, uh, you saved my life. I was about to take my own life. So I'm going to start crying. Thank you, but it was probably one of the, the biggest. I was trying to make you cry. I was going to bring yeah, up your kids and your wife. I was going to bring up your kids and wife. No, don't then, do yeah. that. <laughs> start, start bawling over here. Sure. Well, let's give Chris a big hand. Thank, thank you. you.